Hi, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about, I'm gonna be speaking to the dental students out there about whether or not you should specialize. And I'll give you my two cents worth. Obviously, I did a residency. Um, my residency was done at University of Connecticut. My dental school was done at UCSF in San Francisco. Um, for me, it was the right fit. I knew coming straight into dental school um, that if I was gonna go in dental school, I only wanted to do ortho. That was the only thing I was interested in. So it was a no brainer for me. It was, I wasn't interested at all really in the general dental space, fills, you know, restorative, not my thing. Um, and don't know, you know, um, I slightly considered pedo. I still think that would have been a good fit for me, but um, I wanna talk to you a little bit more about, you know, the pros and cons. Obviously the ortho space has changed dramatically in the last generation. So would I still do it if it was, now, not sure that I would, but I'm glad I did it for me. I think it's incredibly fascinating. I love it. As you know, I make tons of content about how much I love ortho, all different types of ortho. I think it's life-changing, it's fun, it's aesthetic. It's the right fit for me, but maybe not for you. So let's talk a little bit more about who you are. So things that if I woulda, coulda, shoulda, if it was today, maybe I would have done differently. So obviously I went dental school in the late 90s. Um, things were very different, you know, than they are now. So you don't learn that much in dental school. You learn real basic stuff. What you're gonna learn, honestly, is when you graduate, that first year or two. So I do think doing, unless you have an awesome job lined up with an, you know, an owner dentist or a parent who owns an office who's gonna teach you and let you try things, I think you should definitely consider doing an AGD or GPR, depending on what you're more interested in. Um, Definitely that's a great way to get your skills up and do harder procedures. I think that people who didn't do that, then they're stuck. It's rough. It's a rough world out there, you know? Um, same thing goes for people who specialize. Um, I really didn't learn that much in residency. I mean, I did a lot of work, but in terms of real world useful, a lot of concepts and, and understanding the basics, and I understood it, but in terms of finding a useful way to do what I needed to do, what I learned in residency was not useful at all. I basically had to relearn how to do everything once I got into practice because the techniques I was taught were not sustainable in a, in a high volume, fast paced practice. Patients were not gonna go for what the stuff we learned. We learned how to do things with cantilevers and all kinds of springs and stuff like that. And this, these are mouse traps and they're not gonna fly in an average you know, environment. Um, Things to think about, I mean, I learned the most probably in the one year after I got out of residency. I worked for a high volume DSO, it was hard work. But you know, I was young, I was 29, I was active, I had a lot of energy, I loved it. And you know, I could, I could handle a lot. I saw a lot of work that was done that was bad, you know, that I had to fix. I ended up being the orthodontist that these companies sometimes would send me to offices when someone screwed up. And there was a lot of screw ups I saw. And I found ways to fix things in an efficient way. Um, I was good at managing patients. I was good at managing parents. Um, you know, it, it worked. So, I mean, yeah, that first year out was the most useful. I don't think you should go straight from residency to opening your own practice. I think that's a huge mistake. I think I gained so much in those first year or two just working in a clinic um, an ortho clinic, high volume, eight chairs, seven chairs, 100, 120 patients a day. Yeah, rough stuff, you know? But, um, you know, you usually get compensated pretty well and you will get your skills set up something good, something really crazy, you know? Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, as a general dentist, you can do everything as long as you do it to the standard of care of a specialist. I think that if you're 15, 20, 30 years down the road and you're getting kind of tired of bread and butter general dentistry, dentistry it's a great idea to get into a little bit more specialty work. Um, I see a lot of people getting into anesthesia. Um, you know, They get into doing maybe more endo, being almost like a general dental, a super dentist you know, is what they call them. And there's always an opportunity to find, without even having to have your own practice if you don't want to, to hop around to other people's practices and do specialty work. So definitely I see that happening. I see a lot more of that. Um, you know, I, I'm sure specialists don't love it, but it's convenient and a lot of people wanna keep their patients in-house. And I think even more than ever with COVID, patients really wanna stay in-house. So, um, you know, if you end up getting really good at something, whether it's implants, um, sleep, um, airway, ortho, you can definitely spin that off and you can do consulting as well. You can help people out who are doing it in-house who maybe 
don't have the time to attend all kinds of courses. And a lot of times courses are just theoretical. You're not actually learning real world stuff. And they focus often on certain techniques or systems, which I think is a mistake because you get really biased and it's not always the right thing. There's not a one size fits all approach for every case. You need to be open-minded and find the right product or system or technique that's gonna work for that patient. And if you're only sticking with a certain program that you know makes their own type of thing, it's gonna not turn out that well. And I've worked and seen enough outcomes when this happens that I realize now that that's not the best idea and I'm not gonna name names or anything like that. But you need to be open-minded, be willing to try different products um, and different techniques and find the best, most effective technique for you, your patient and your office. So hopefully that was helpful. So yes, I mean, if you really, but keep in mind also, I mean, one other thing, cause we were kind of talking about ortho, is one thing I never thought about back in dental school, um, you know, when I even considered specialization is how is this especially gonna impact my life? How is it gonna impact the quality of my life? How is it gonna impact my family life? And I think you gotta realize, you know, with especially with ortho, and it's changed, like I said, it used to be 20 years ago when I first was going into it, um, it was a fully, you know, referral-based specialty. It wasn't a problem. People, most general dentists didn't do any ortho. There was no Invisalign when I first got started. You know, they, they send it all out. They didn't want to deal with it. They didn't know how to do brackets and wires. So you would get referrals like clockwork. It was great, right? It just basically was feeding you. You didn't have to do any marketing, not really. Um, it's totally changed. So now you need to be a pretty dynamic individual if you're gonna have an ortho practice. It takes a certain personality to be that person, high energy, extroverted. Unless you're that person, I don't think you should go into ortho because you're gonna have to crazy be on social media, crazy be fighting for your patients. It's not gonna be easy. I can tell you that much. So that's why I think growing your brand um, in dental school is super important. And unless you're into that stuff, don't do ortho. Very aesthetic based. Um, also keep in mind that with ortho now, I mean, there's a lot of virtual stuff that you can, you can set up your, your practice with a lot of virtual concepts. And I think that will really help. But for the most part, especially if you're in a middle to upper income area, patients are not gonna come in during the day. They're gonna come in after three or four. They're gonna come in the evening. They're gonna to wanna to come in on weekends and that's just how it's gonna go. So if you have your own kids, and this is like, I don't know why I didn't think about this, but if you have your own family, school age kids, how's that gonna work for you? You're never gonna see your kids. And that's ultimately what I changed to consulting after 10 years. So I was like, forget this. I only had my kids at home for 18 years. You know, I already barely see them. Literally, I get up in the morning, they go off to school. I, by the time I get home from work, they're asleep, you know, and I have to work on Saturdays and repeat. And it was literally like, these kids are growing up without their mom, you know? So I said, forget this, I'm done. You know, there's no way, you know, if you live in maybe a small town where there's not that many orthodontists, well, then they're gonna have to come in during the day. So that might be different, but you live in a more urban area where there's already a lot of competition, forget it. You have to be available on the after hours in order to do stuff. And if you're not, you will never, never survive as a specialist, as an orthodontist, which sees, you know, kids and teens, right? For the most part. Unless you're fully making an adult-only practice, which for me was like, no, thank you. That's no fun. It takes all the fun out of ortho, right? And I love working with kids and teens. That's the best part of it. So think about that because I didn't. And it kind of hit me in the face and it hit my family in the face and it hit my husband in the face. Um, and it, we were like, this isn't working, you know? It wasn't what he wanted to do. It wasn't what I wanted. That's why I transitioned into consulting and product development um, and everything else, which has worked out fine for me. And I've been very blessed but it may not work out for you. So think about that before you jump into ortho. That's all I gotta say. All right, thanks so much.